Chapter 3, Section 2, Developing Firmware with Propel SDK. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing Propel SDK's basic firmware development flow, as well as the various ways that you will use memory initialization files within your project. So with that said, let's quickly review the key points for this video before diving into a live demo. The first key point for this video is to introduce users to Propel SDK's compilation settings as well as how you can compile your software's project code. Aside from those two points, the last two key points are for us to review how we can generate the files used for debugging with OpenOCD, as well as how we can initialize our projects to system memory with the memory initialization file that we generate using Propel SDK. So with that said, let's transition over to my desktop view so we can get a better idea for the process of generating memory initialization files using Propel SDK. So base Propel SDK projects come with two different modes, release and debug, each of which have some slightly different compilation settings. By default, our project will be set to debug mode, so that is what we'll stick with for the purpose of this demo. To build our project, we can simply right click any of the files from within our project from the file list area, and then select build project to build that project. Similarly, we can also use this hammer icon from the menu bar, which actually allows us to control which mode we want our project's code to be compiled using, either debug or release. Once we have built our project using either of the two methods we just discussed, the Propel SDK console will update with the information regarding the compilation status of our software project. And when it finishes successfully, we'll see a blue bold finish message indicating that our compilation was successful. The most important thing I want to point out is the debug folder that was it's the debug folder that was generated when our project was compiled, which contains several additional files that we can use to test our firmware on our device. The .elf file is one of the most important debugging files here, and is used to test our application on device using OpenOCD, which is discussed in more depth in the following section of the video training series, section 4.3, Debugging with OpenOCD. Aside from that, the next most important file that you should know about is the .mem file, which is used to initialize our SOC project system memory and also allows us to test our firmware on device, albeit in a less convenient way than using OpenOCD. With that said, let's quickly discuss the two main ways that you can use this .mem file in order to initialize your SOC project system memory. The first way to do this is to directly initialize your project system memory using the source Propel Builder project by modifying your component's parameters to initialize its memory. Once you have located the memory initialization file for your project and updated your system memory component with that file, you will need to click Generate in order to regenerate the IP so that your changes are updated in your project. The advantage of this method is that this change impacts the actual RTL for your code and allows you to test your firmware using alternative methods such as model sim simulation. Aside from initializing your project's memory in Propel Builder, Another way that you can initialize your memory is using Radiant or Diamond's ECO Editor tool. The main appeal of ECO Editor is that it allows you to make changes to your project post place and route without having to rerun through the entire project development flow again, beginning with synthesis, then map, and finally place and route again. The disadvantage of this method is that this memory initialization change only impacts the active UDB file for your project and not its RTL meaning that these changes won't remain the next time you rerun PAR, and will also not stick if you want to simulate your SOC project. With that said, to initialize your project system memory using ECO Editor, simply locate the memory initialization parameter from your component that you want to initialize, and then double-click it to select the correct memory formatting and location for the file that you want to use. Once you've made these changes, save your ECO editor in order to add these changes to your project. As you can see from the demo on the screen, we did not have to rerun PAR after making these memory initialization changes, which is the main appeal of ECO editor. 
That concludes this section of the video training series. To watch the next video in the series, select the video called Section 3.3, Debugging with OpenOCD.